Good morning and a very warm welcome to you to the church this morning. Uh, we, it's so good to see, if I may say so, to see Pat here and Philippa. A very warm welcome and send our good wishes to John in hospital. Uh, you'll see that we have a prayer list in the information sheet and uh, we ask once again that people will remember those involved in those situations that you bring them to the Lord in prayer. But we'll go back to the welcome. Uh, once again, a very warm welcome to everybody, those visiting as well, and a welcome to a preacher this morning, that's our brother Andrew Wilson from Llandrindod, although I believe he lives in Bilth Wells. A very warm welcome, he attends Tabernacle Church in Llandrindod, and uh, it's not the first time he's been here, so welcome back, Andrew, and we ask that the Lord will indeed uh, anoint his word to us this morning so that we shall be blessed as we come together to worship him. Uh, we may be watched on YouTube as well, and uh, if anybody is watching, well, very warm welcome to you to our service. At uh, five o'clock today, we'll be holding our Welsh language service when we expect a former student from uh, uh, Lampeter, uh, who actually met his wife here as well, Nigel Binding, from Swansea, to be preaching and leading at that service. And there is a simultaneous translation service provided. Uh, well, I've drawn attention to the information sheet and the list of people and matters in the prayer list. Uh, there are other bits of information in that information sheet. Have a look at them and see what's happening this week. Uh, on Wednesday at 7.30, there'll be house groups. The English language, this is a week earlier than usually happens in the month. Uh, but the English language group is meeting at the church and the Welsh language group meeting at the mustard seed. Uh, then, at the end of the week, on Saturday, and at nine o'clock, there is a men's breakfast. Now, the men's breakfast is usually held at eight o'clock in the morning, but this is an outreach meeting, so it's a special meeting. We have a speaker, and that's uh, Paul Daniel, and uh, as I said, we're starting at nine o'clock, Next Saturday, April the 13th, it would be good if uh, men could invite others to come along with them, friends, acquaintances, family members perhaps, because it's an outreach event, it's a good opportunity to share and hear the Gospel. So please remember that particular event. Uh, then next Sunday, we expect Mike Adams from Swansea to be preaching here at 10.30 and at 5 o'clock. Um, and there's some information, uh, there was information in the information sheet last week, but uh, there are these little uh, leaflets. Uh, there is an alpha course running in the church. This is introdu introduced the uh, Christian faith to people who would be interested. Pray and invite your family and friends to the alpha course, which is about life and the Christian faith. It's starting on the 16th of April, a Tuesday, and it's between 7 and 9 p.m. There'll be an informal supper, video, and discussions. And if you are really interested, then pick up one of these little um, leaflets or see Richard, Jill, or Helen. Uh, Clyde and Janice Briggs will be travelling, actually travelling today, uh, on behalf of Open Doors, to uh, parts of North Africa to help with sharing the gospel. They're going on behalf of Open Doors. They've been to many different parts of the world in the past. They're going today, they're coming back on April the 19th, and they ask for prayers for protection during that journey. And there are copies of their prayer uh, letter in the foyer outside. EMW are organising a spring break this year again at Brinnegroes Pala. Uh, it's being held between May the 13th and the 18th, and there are more details on the notice board in the foyer. And once again, a warm invitation to join us for more informal fellowship and light refreshment at the Mr. Seed at the end of the service, and it would be good to see you there and have that further fellowship. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the invitation uh, to come uh, back and uh, 
share some of the wonderful truths of God's word with you. Uh, thank you for braving uh, the weather as I drove in uh, this morning. I thought there was a new boat in Lake, but it was co-op car park there. But uh, thank, thank you for um, coming and we can ask God's blessing upon this uh, time together. So let's uh, commit this uh, time to the Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, oh Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, the privilege of being able to meet together and to bring you the praise and the worship that only you deserve. And yet, Lord, we recognize uh, that we are weak souls and we need your help to do that. So we ask that you'd bless us, um, that you'd help us and guide us by your spirit. Uh, guide us in the hearing and uh, uh, as we come around your word, but also guide us as we sing, uh, sing our doctrine, these wonderful truths uh, to you. Uh, help us, we pray, to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, our first hymn um, is number 449 in the Mission Praise. And it's a wonderful song of worship, but in it there's also a, uh, a prayer and a plea as we sing uh, the hymn um, for instance in verse 1 uh, we talk about Jesus thou art all compassion pure unbounded love thou art and there's that request visit us with thy salvation enter every trembling heart we pray the Lord would indeed work in our hearts today so we stand to sing uh, hymn number 449 love divine <coughs>
reading uh, this morning. Uh, it's been noted before the service that there's a very short reading, but I hope we'll see as we come to look at it later the depth of uh, uh, the passage. It's just four verses. I think it's probably the shortest reading um, I've uh, read in a service. Um, so it's Matthew chapter 8, uh, verses 1 to 4, and Jesus has been um, preaching that great uh, sermon on the mountain. It's we call the Sermon of the Mount, and then we come to verse 1. When he, it was Jesus, had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. May God bless uh, these uh, four verses to us as we come to look at them shortly. Um, well, I did send the order of the service. Um, I did uh, put a the next hymn now, but and then a children's talk. Have we got any children here today? Some little ones. And I, I see your hands going up at the back. Good morning. Right then, children's or short talk it is, and then we'll come to the next hymn. Um, now, if you can hear me at the back. Uh, how many of you have chores or jobs to do when you are at home? Yes? Okay. And what sort of jobs are they? Do you, what do you have to do? That's very important. Oh, what do you do? Do you do that all the time? That's wonderful. Do, do you ever have to help with things like washing up? Yes? Oh, well, I have to do the washing up as well sometimes. And um, if I'm at home and I've got some time off, and like this week my wife's out, out uh, helping on her parents' farm doing the lambing, I've done more washing up this week. But sometimes if I'm working, uh, Louise will do most of the washing up um, and sometimes while we're both there we'll both do the washing up and my wife tends to do the washing and I do the drying because she, I was going to say she's fussy she's got higher standards <laughs> higher standards uh, than me and uh, if you ever needed someone to wash up don't pick me pick Louise in the mustard seed because uh, She's got an eye that can pick anything up. Now, I brought a plate with me. So, there's a, a plate uh, out of the cupboard from home. Would you be happy to have your dinner on that plate? Yeah, yeah I, I would be as well. But if my wife picked this out of the cupboard, it's happened several times, she'd be walking over to the table and she'd be like this and say, she'll say, someone's not washed this properly. And do you know who the someone is? <laughs> me that's right and then what normally happens is she'll run her finger over it do you hear that she'll say there's a bit of cheese stuck on there has that ever happened to you and uh, do you think she'll use the plate then no what will she do she'll wash it again that's right and yeah because she's got higher standards than I have, and she spots any bit of dirt on a plate. Now, there's someone who sees better than Louise, and who's got a much higher standard than Louise as well. Who do we think that is? Jesus, that's right. Yeah, and God sees everything. And sometimes, on the outward appearance, things look clean, but when you have a closer look, they're actually dirty, that's right. And and we're like that, aren't we? Because we can, we can look okay on the outside, but on closer inspection, 
Um, we're all dirty. We've all, uh, the Bible says, sinned. And we might not have um, done what our parents have always asked us to do. Sometimes we might have told lies. Sometimes we, shouldn't, we, we don't do things we're supposed to do. Um, sometimes we're greedy. And all these things mount up. And actually, when we look at ourselves, we're filthy dirty. We have this sin problem. Do you think my wife would put that plate, now she knows it's dirty, back in the cupboard? No. No, that's right, she wouldn't. And do you think, as sinners, dirty people, we could go to heaven, which is perfect? Well, we can, but not with our sins. We have to be washed clean, don't we, to go. Now, we can't... We have to trust in God. That's exactly right. I think you should be here. <laughs> and I'll come and sit in the back because we might get more sense. But that's exactly right. Um, there's only one way that we could be made clean. And that's uh, by what the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished at the cross. And I'm sure you've looked at that um, most weeks, especially last week when we celebrated Easter. And we hear that the Lord Jesus Christ, he died on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven, so that we could be washed clean. Now, I, I said about Louise spots every bit of dirt. See, God sees every one of our sins. And that can be a bit of a scary thought, can't it? Because he knows what we're really like. But it's also an amazing thought. Because he sees, because he sees everything we've done, and has seen every sin, when he washes us clean, he doesn't miss anything. It's a proper job. He makes us fit for glory. And we can have confidence that we can be with him, uh, washed clean by what the Lord Jesus did, by his life, his death, and his resurrection. Is that a question with a hand up? No. Okay. Right. So, when you're at home, next time you're helping with the washing up, or you're washing your face, or you're cleaning everything, I want you to think, what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. And he will wash us clean. We've had that story um, of the man who was a leper and he went to Jesus and he said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And what did Jesus do? He cleaned him. Yeah. He said, I am willing. Be cleansed. And immediately he was clean. Now we can walk, we, you might have walked in here today and not even known that you're a sinner. And maybe God would deal with you today and show you that you are a sinner, because everyone is. We've all lied and we've all done things wrong. And that separates us from God. But Jesus, God keeps it simple for us. He's made one way. We don't have to think about other ways or trying to be good. God has made one way where we can be right, and that's by calling on Jesus to forgive us our sins so that we can be right. So... We're going to sing a song which asks the question, a hymn, and it's number 543. And it says, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting? That's what you said at the top, didn't it? We need to trust in God. Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Uh, we stand to sing.
before we uh, come to sing our next hymn and uh, the children go to Sunday school uh, class, um, we have this privilege of being able to come to pray. And uh, I'm sure there's uh, many things on your hearts and maybe things weighing heavy on you and we can bring them uh, to the Lord now in prayer. We have a very faithful God who's demonstrated his love towards us and that whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Um, it's such a privilege being able to meet together, isn't it? And it's something we shouldn't take uh, for granted. Uh, the things are changing, I'm sure you've noticed in, in the UK and in, in the West, and uh, privileges that we've, we take for granted uh, may not always um, be there. So, but today we have this wonderful um, privilege, I'll say it again, of joining together uh, in worship and coming to pray. So we'll do that now. Gracious Heavenly Father, oh Lord, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. Uh, Lord, help us to rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we thank you for your love towards us. We thank you again for the simplicity of the gospel message that uh, there's one way uh, to be saved and there's one saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank you for um, how that love was displayed at the cross. Uh, we thank you uh, that it is you who opens our eyes, who takes us uh, from the broad, broad path, uh, destined for destruction, uh, that you uh, open our eyes to our sin and to our need of a saviour. We thank you that uh, it is all of grace and we thank you for the faith that you give us uh, to put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour. And Lord, we do pray today, uh, especially for anyone who doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour, uh, whether young or old, whether in this room uh, here now or watching online, that uh, uh, they would today call on the name of the Lord to be saved. Um, we thank you for uh, what you've done here in Lampeter. We thank you for the fellowship. Uh, we do uh, ask your blessing upon those who are ill uh, this day and those who are in hospital and who would love to be here but can't. We pray that you would draw close to them. Uh, we thank you for um, the outreaches here. Uh, we ask your blessing upon uh, the Alpha Course and we pray that uh, under your sovereign hand that uh, men, women, boys and girls would uh, indeed come and ask questions because uh, Christianity is built on truth and we have the privilege of having answers that point uh, to you Lord and we thank you for this uh, privilege of being able to bring our petitions to you and we ask that you would be glorified Lord in answering these prayers and that our faith be strengthened. Uh, we thank you for your word, uh, the very uh, truths that contain it for the, within it. We thank you for the wisdom and we pray that today that you would bless us as we gather around your word, that those um, wonderful truths uh, that we find would uh, encourage us, that they would challenge us, that they would build us out, that they build us up and unite us uh, as a fellowship. We thank you that it is you who build your church. And, oh Lord, we just ask for your, more of your grace and mercy this day. Lord, we pray for our nation. Um, we think especially, oh Lord, of uh, certainly the extension of these uh, hate crime laws in Scotland that have been passed, Lord. Um, we pray for uh, Christians in Scotland, Lord, that they would have wisdom and uh, know what to say and when to say it. But Lord, we pray that uh, we would not shy away from sharing the gospel. And uh, that goes for each of us, Lord. We thank you for uh, how you saved us. Uh, we thank you for our testimonies that they were bought by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And 
Lord, may we treasure our testimonies. May we try to be salt and light uh, at home, uh, in our workplaces, uh, within our families and friends, with the people that we meet each day under your sovereign hand. Uh, Lord, we recognise that each day is precious, that each day is a gift. Um, we only have one opportunity uh, to live each day. And we ask uh, your forgiveness when we don't live as we should, but we ask that you give us strength and wisdom to live uh, for you, uh, to be able to point others uh, to you, Lord. Uh, bless this time, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, and we're going to sing our next hymn, which again is in uh, New Christian Hymns, number 150. Uh, it is, Great is the gospel of our glorious God, where mercy met the anger of God's rod. A penalty was paid and pardon bought, and sinners lost at last to him were brought. Oh, let the praises of my heart be thine. Can you sing that uh, this morning? For Christ has died that I may call him mine, that I may sing with those who dwell above, adoring, praising Jesus, King of love. Thank you.
right now. These four verses. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 to 4, entitled The Leper. There's lots of different ways we can normally start a sermon, but there is a lot in these four verses, so we're going to jump straight in and work through them. So we read in verse 1, uh, when he, that is Jesus, uh, had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Uh, Jesus had been on the mountain. He'd been preaching uh, this well-known sermon, uh, which takes up Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, which we call the Sermon on the Mount. And after, we read that he came down and great multitudes followed him. Jesus is carrying on exactly where he left off in uh, Matthew chapter 4, uh, where Jesus is recorded as going through Galilee preaching, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's a simple gospel message, isn't it, of salvation, uh, of eternal life for those who would turn from their sins and repent. Um, that good news gospel message, and it's never changed, does it, from when uh, Jesus was preaching it to uh, what you hear each week here in Lampeter. Chapter 4 uh, tells us that Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. And verse 25 uh, said that great multitudes followed him, him from Galilee, and from the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. A truly good teacher uh, taught what he lived and lived what he taught. Uh, There's no hypocrisy in him. Uh, we get wound up by hypocrites, don't we, that say one thing and then do the other, but not with Jesus. Uh, he taught what he lived, he lived it out. After all, the gospel, the good news is Jesus, is his life and his death and his resurrection. And we're gonna see what that means for us as we work through these verses. But before coming down from the mountain, he laid out this challenging sermon, um, uh, which we call the Sermon of the Mount. Christianity 101, if you like. Sinclair Ferguson said it teaches Christians how to live as servants of the king in a world that doesn't recognize his sovereign reign. So Jesus taught his followers. He came down from the mountain and continued to live out uh, the standard which he called his disciples and us also to follow. And we read that he was followed by great multitudes which indeed included his disciples. Um, the multitude would have included people who'd heard Jesus speak and they were amazed because no one before him or since has spoke with such authority and people wanted more. No doubt people were there because they'd heard about the miracles and just wanted to see for themselves, uh, was this real? People followed Jesus for different reasons and that is still true today. But coming down from the mountain, we find ourselves, as Luke records, in a certain city. Uh, the syn synoptic gospels are wonderful, Matthew, Mark and Luke, because they look at an event from different angles, like when we watch a film and we see different bits of information, and we're going to bring a few of those in. I love one which we're going to hear shortly um, from Luke. So we have Jesus, we have his disciples, we have this great multitude um, now in this certain city where there would have been this throng of people and you have the walls of the dwellings and it must have been uh, just quite cramped almost. It made me think of um, a hot day at the Royal Welsh Show. I don't know if any of you have been there. It's sort of walking distance from my house. And on a hot day you're walking up these concrete aisles and they have all the vendors and the different exhibitors. And sometimes you feel like you just got to go with the crowd because... There's that feeling of so many people there. If you take that, that thought to this certain city, we have Jesus followed by this great number of people. 
And then Matthew says in verse 2, And behold, look, see, don't miss this. He says, And behold, a leper came. Now for Matthew to pro proclaim, And behold, a leper came. We need to look into uh, what and who a leper was to see the staggering uniqueness of this encounter. A leper, of course, is someone who had leprosy. And to have leprosy, even today, is a horrific illness. There's a great stigma attached to it, and people are quite often ostracised and have to live in colonies. Uh, today, thankfully, um, there's a cure for it. In the 1940s, there was found hope through drug therapy, and what I found out wasn't until 1995. Um, that a multi-drug program was rolled out to treat those who were suffering with it. Uh, leprosy or Hansen's disease uh, in the form we find it today has to be caught early and treated with multiple uh, antibiotics over one to two years. Which is hard because many of the people with it don't seek out medical help because the symptoms come up slowly and people think, no, we'll, we'll hang on and because of the stigma, and that makes it very hard um, to treat because it's a slow-growing bacteria. But when leprosy takes hold, it is horrible, to say the least. Uh, in my main commentary I used uh, when I was working through Matthew, a commentary by William Hendrickson, through his contact with two uh, medical doctors who were missionaries, uh, Dr. L.S. Who is Zenger? I, I, can't, I probably murdered that. And Dr. E. R. Kellersberger. He, he writes this. Just read from my commentary here. He says The disease which we today call leprosy generally begins with pain in certain areas of the body. Numbness follows. Soon the skin in such spots loses its original colour. It gets to be thick, glossy and scaly. In fact, the affliction is called leprosy because it makes the skin scaly. The Greek word lepos or lepis meaning scale. As the sickness progresses, the thickened spots become dirty sores and ulcers due to the poor blood supply. The skin, especially around the eyes and ears, begins to bunch with deep furrows between the swellings so that the face of the afflicted individual begins to resemble that of a lion. Fingers drop off or are absorbed. Toes are affected similarly. Eyebrows and eyelashes drop out. By this time, one can see that the person in this pitiable condition is a leper. By a touch of the finger, one can also feel it. One can even smell it, for the leper emits a very unpleasant odour. Moreover, in view of the fact that the disease-producing agent frequently also attacks the larynx, voice box, the leper's voice acquires a grating quality. His throat becomes hoarse, and you can now not only feel, see, and smell the leper, but you can hear his rasping voice. And if you stay with him some time, you even imagine a peculiar taste in your mouth probably due to the odour. All the senses of the well person are engaged in the direction of the leper. You can see why Matthew writes, and behold, a leper came. And for those who might say, well, perhaps he only just started uh, getting symptoms, no, and here's why God's word is so amazing. Because who does the Holy Spirit inspire to give the extra detail here? It's Luke, the Dr. Luke, uh, the physician. And Luke, in his gospel, writes, And behold, a man who was full of leprosy. This was no minor case. I found that amazing, in God's word amazing. We can have no doubt that this man was full of leprosy and in a wretched condition. But it gets worse still. 
because in the Torah, the law of Moses, there were laws regarding lepers. And it's quite an extensive list. It takes up Leviticus chapters 13 and 14. So I'll give you a con condensed summation of what it says. Firstly, it told God's people that if, if someone presents with a swelling scab or bright spot that could be a leprous sore, then that person was to go to the priest to be examined. If it was found to be leprous, leprous, they would be deemed unclean. If at this point they were not sure, they'd have to isolate for seven days. Remember isolation? We've, we've had enough of that, haven't we? There's nothing new there under the sun. So the person has to isolate. Then they get the equivalent of uh, track and trace 2,000 years ago. Um, They get a follow-up then on the seventh day. If nothing is changed, they have to have another seven days isolation. And on the seventh day, they get reassessed again. If the sore is now faded and not spread, then they are pronounced clean and they have to wash uh, their clothes and they can carry on. They're okay. But if the sore has spread, they're pronounced unclean. It says it is leprosy and that's the end of verse 8 of Leviticus 13. The rest of the chapter then goes on to um, describe different presentations of skin conditions and different observations that point to things that sound like psoriasis. Um, but through these observations, by the priest, it could be found whether the person was contagious or not, um, and whether they'd be deemed clean or unclean. And then we get to verses 45 and 46, uh, and we hear what the verdict is for a leper like our man that Matthew's writing about. And this is what it says. It says, Now the leper on whom the sore is, his clothes shall be torn, his head bare, and he shall cover his moustache, or some translations say upper lip, um, I think face mask, he has to uh, cover up because um, they didn't want anything being passed on by moisture droplets or coughed up. And the leper is to cry, unclean unclean and all the days that he has the sore it is said that he will be unclean and he shall dwell alone and his dwelling shall be outside of the camp so with that in mind we can see why matthew says behold a leper came what a sight this would have been this poor man who would normally be living in isolation, entered the city. And can you imagine the reaction from the crowd? It's bad enough, isn't it? Um, in the last few years, if we start coughing, you remember that, when you coughed in, the, in maybe a service and you thought everyone was looking at you in case you, in case you had something. Um, but this poor man here, uh, full of le leprosy, coming through the multitude, a terrible sight. They may have even smelled him before they saw him and they certainly would have heard him as he croaked unclean unclean and yet he made his way to Jesus and what did he do when he found Jesus Matthew says and behold a leper came and worshipped him and Mark adds that he knelt down and Luke says that he fell on his face and whether he knelt down and then got on his face or on his face and then onto his knees doesn't matter. Matthew wrote that he worshipped him. What faith this leper had, which would have come from hearing about Jesus, hearing who he was. Paul would later write in Romans, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He'd heard good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. <coughs> he knew that his life seemed hopeless. And maybe yours seems hopeless. But his life wasn't hopeless. He suddenly had hope through hearing about the Saviour. And all his pride and all his embarrassment 
were put aside. He'd realised that Jesus Christ was his only hope and he flung himself at the feet of the Saviour and worshipped him. And he cried out to him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. People cry out to the Lord for many things, don't they? In fact, the chapter before in Matthew chapter 7, it talks about um, on the day of judgment where people will cry, Lord, Lord, and then list all the things they've done. And the Lord will say, depart from me, I never knew you. Here though, we have a man truly realising his need, realising Jesus is Lord. And there is no hope in any other and notice he doesn't demand healing. He says, if you are willing, he's asking for grace. But how had this man, who would have had to live in isolation, heard about Jesus? Who had told him about the Saviour? It happens that someone was living out the instruction would have been taught in the sermon, sermon of the Mount. Someone would have been salt and light. Someone would have had compassion and put their own fears aside to go and tell this man there was hope to be found in Jesus Christ. And the result, this leper recognised that there was hope. There was hope to be found in Christ alone. And by faith he threw himself at the feet of Jesus, putting the fear of the crowds aside and cried, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. He doesn't demand it yet. He has faith that Jesus can heal him. It's a prayer, isn't it? Almost. It's a plea to the Lord. It's almost in line with the Lord when he taught the disciples how to pray with the Lord's prayer our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name it starts with worship and it says your will be done your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven he's asking if the Lord is willing and we read in verse 3 then Jesus put out his hand and touched him saying I am willing be cleansed and we read immediately his leprosy was cleansed can you imagine the watching crowd? Must have been an amazing scene. I'm sure they'd had a great view because they would have been crowded in. And as this uh, poor man in his wretched condition had gone through, it would have been like the parting of the Red Sea, wouldn't it? People would have gotten out of his way. It would have been like this amphitheatre around him. And as everyone went back, most likely covering their faces because uh, of the smell and because they were because of their fear, Jesus steps towards him and puts out his hand and touches him. He says, "I am willing. Be cleansed." I bet it was deathly quiet there before the gasps as the crowd, as we read immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. But we sometimes pray, don't we? Lord willing, or if it is your will. But Jesus simply, with the authority of the Son of God, says, I am willing. I am willing, be cleansed. Clearly shows us the power and the authority of Jesus Christ as the Son of God. But also what compassion from Jesus. In fact, Mark in his account wrote, and Jesus moved with compassion stretched out his hand and touched him. He had compassion and he had the power to heal with it, to turn around this poor soul's life. Only God alone could heal this man's condition. This was a condition that at the time certainly couldn't have been healed by man. I'll back that, that up by scripture. Um, do you remember the account of Naaman? Uh, it's recorded in 2 Kings chapter 5. Naaman was uh, a captain of the king of Syria's army, a uh, potential enemy for Israel. 
and Naaman in his household has had a captured Israelite uh, slave girl who was being salt and light in the household. And Naaman himself had leprosy. He would have known uh, where his life was heading. But the slave girl says to Naaman's wife, that there's a prophet in Israel who can help Elisha. Anyway, Naaman decides to go and visit the king of Israel and ask uh, if he could be helped. And the king of Israel takes it very badly. He thinks it's a provocation uh, by uh, the king of Syria sending him this man uh, to be healed on which he knew he couldn't heal him because no one got healed of leprosy. And the king got very stressed. He said, am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of this leprosy? The king knew he couldn't help. And he got distressed by this. He thought they were going to have a war. And Elisha gets to hear about this and hears about the king's uh, predicament and distress. And Elisha sends, sent for Naaman. And uh, Naaman, if you remember, was given instructions from Elisha by a messenger to go wash in the Jordan uh, seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. And it took a while to sink in, but when Naaman finally uh, did what he was asked, he was cured. And this is what Naaman's response was. He said, indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Through God's sovereign power, Naaman, just like Matthew's leper, was healed. And there's also the account of Miriam, who God healed. Uh, the facts were that no one got healed from leprosy apart from by God's sovereign hand. And yet here we see Jesus healing this leper by the touch of his hand. Back to Matthew's account. Uh, Jesus immediately charged him and sent him away at once. Um, by saying in verse 4, See that you tell no one. But go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. At first glance, this seems a strange thing to do because you'd think if a miracle to happen, you want to send this man off that God could be glorified. Um, when Jesus heals the uh, man from the Gadarenes who has this legion of demons, he runs down, he heals him in front of the people and he says to him, go, tell what great things God has done for you. But not here, not with the leprosy. Why is that? Well, Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, he said this. He said, do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will be no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever breaks, therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Well, Jesus knew the law perfectly, didn't he? And he knew there was a law for the leper in the day of his cleansing. The man would have to go and show himself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses had commanded. And there was quite a ritual involved with that uh, recorded in Leviticus chapter 14. And it would be followed until Christ fulfilled the law. He certainly wouldn't cause this leper to stumble. And more so, well, and so he, he also called the leper to present himself as a testimony to them. Now when I'm at work, or when Sean's at work, there's various drugs we give quite often. Um, and some you don't have to look at the contraindications and the indications for giving them because 
we give them day in, day out, like morphine or paracetamol or something like that. There's other drugs in, in the drugs box, which I have to say, I've never given. And if I was to give them, I'd have to get my uh, protocols and guidelines out and examine them to see that I was giving them right, uh, in the right dosage, etc., and for the right thing. How often do you think people presented themselves to the priests, telling that they telling them that they've been cured of this incurable disease. Yet see this, under God's sovereignty, he'd already put a law in place for a leper in the, in the um, day of his cleansing. Perhaps these priests would have to search out the scroll and get the dust off it, the one that had never been used, or had never been used until this Nazarene had turned up and started curing people left, right and centre of all these um, diseases. This is an obvious proclamation of the truth that Jesus was indeed the Son of God, their Messiah. It was a testimony to them. So did the cleansed leper do that? Uh, no. Mark records that he went out and started telling everyone and I probably have done the same. We read that Jesus could no longer open the end of the city, but was outside in deserted places, and they came to him from every direction. That's Mark chapter 1, verse 45. So what can we learn from this passage? What can we apply to our lives? My first point is this. The leper made his request known to Jesus verbally, verbally and publicly. And God was glorified as people witnessed his plea answered. See, answered requests or answered prayer not only glorifies God, but it strengthens our faith also as we see and witness prayers being answered. God is glorified and we are blessed. What's well, the chief end of man? It's to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And we see that in Acts chapter 12, um, where Peter is arrested by, by Herod, um, chained up in prison, and we read that the church, church family prayed for him. And their prayer, it was answered miraculously and Peter was freed and we read that he went to the house of Mary uh, the mother of John whose name was Mark where many were gathered together and were praying and they let Peter in eventually um, and we hear about how they were amazed and then Peter tells them to go and tell others about what had happened through their prayer meeting God was glorified and their faith was strengthened um, we had a prayer meeting a number of years ago in Tabernacle where we um, were asked to pray for a man called Ollie Gross. He was the pastor in Welshpool at the time. He's now in Bristol, I think. And he'd uh, recovered from cancer and he'd gone for a scan and they'd found three more spots on his lungs. And he'd asked for prayer and we prayed for him. And he went back um, for the pre-op and it'd gone. Amazing. God doesn't always answer prayers like that, but that's an example of when he did. And God was glorified, and our faith was strengthened. It's wonderful when we see answered prayer. And do we pray enough? I don't. And yet, we miss such an opportunity, because if God is glorified... And our faith is strengthened. When we don't pray, God is not glorified. And our faith can't be strengthened. Because a prayer that is never prayed can never be answered, can it? A number of years ago, uh, I was driving up to the Pound Chapel where I preached with Pastor Rob. And I always feel completely out of my depth uh, handling God's word. And I'd rather be sat at the back because... As you have seen, I stumble with my words and etc. 
And I prayed to the Lord as I was driving up. I said, Lord, if you want me to carry on, please encourage me. And we got through the service and I walked down the right hand side of the aisle and this dear old lady who's gone to be with the Lord now, um, called Betty, grabbed my arm and pulled me into her. She said, I really wasn't gonna come today because I felt so ill, but I felt I must come to encourage you. Well, it just, even now, it wells up within me. Thanks for answered prayer. But a prayer that is never made can never be answered. We can't always make um, our churches pray, prayer meetings or prayer walks, as I've seen on the website. Um, but do we have a heart that wants to join in prayer, to glorify God, to ask for his blessings? We've got a f some certain members in Tabernacle that if they're not in the prayer meeting, you know that they're ill or they're away. <coughs> They have a wonderful testimony that they have a heart for prayer. And maybe you say, I can't pray. Well, this is all new to me. And I had, I've had people tell me in the past that they don't like going to prayer meetings because people pray for a long time. Look at the leper's prayer. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Ten words. And look what it accomplished. We're talking about it today, a couple of thousand years later. If some people pray for a long time, all praise to God. If someone utters a short prayer, all praise to God. The disciples went to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Five or six words. And it's hard to pray aloud in public. We can worry what we sound like. But it shouldn't matter, should it? Look at this leper with his croaky, raspy voice. Um, with the crowd looking on. He didn't care. He'd stop focusing on himself. He was focusing on Jesus and look what it accomplished. So the challenge for us and for myself. Come to the prayer meetings. Even if it's like the prayer of the disciples, Lord, teach us to pray. And see how you'll be strengthened as a church, as a fellowship. See how God will be glorified. I hope that will encourage us. My second point, it's a much shorter point, but no less important, is the example of Jesus. He's practicing what he preached. He's showing his compassion. If we are to be followers of Jesus, we need that compassion as well for the lost, the suffering. This leper was healed from his affliction because someone had taken the time to share the good news of Jesus with him, to point him to the one that God had sent for people lost burdened with the weights of the world on their shoulders so do we have the love and compassion enough to tell others that there is an answer to their every need and that is the Lord Jesus Christ for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved that was the second point and challenge the last point is leprosy is a vivid illustration of sin. The bacteria that causes leprosy, it infects from within. Sin too starts from within, doesn't it? Within our hearts. It's where our thoughts and our desires come from. Leprosy is also contagious. Sin is contagious. It spread from Adam didn't it, to the world. But it can spread from us too. A simple example is through idle gossip. If it's from one person to another to another. The tongue can cause much damage. 
leprosy, when it takes hold, it mars, it distorts the outward appearance. Um, it diseases the whole body until it slowly leads to death. The Bible tells us the wages of sin is death. But sin is so much more serious than even a horrific disease like leprosy or cancer that can kill the body. For sin kills the body and the soul. But here's the good news. The only cure for the leper was by God's grace. The only cure for our sin still today and forever until he comes again is by God's grace. And it is offered freely today. And maybe this morning you're here or you're watching on YouTube and you feel physically well. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're in a horrific place yourself, physically. But far more importantly, have you been healed from your sin? Are you all right with God? Because he offers eternal life, peace and joy uh, for your soul, despite the horrific trials that we all have to go through, saved and unsaved. He offers you a chance to be cleansed from your sin, to be made new, a new creation. What must you do to be saved? It's the same as Jesus was preaching. Repent. Turn from your sin. Put your trust in him alone. And we mustn't worry what the multitude are thinking. If there's people around you, what others might say, the leper didn't, did he? This is between you and God. You don't even have to say, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Because Jesus is willing. He said, the one who comes to me, I will by, by no means cast out. He's offering it to you. You may have come in here today not knowing the Lord, and you can leave being saved of your sin, being washed clean, cleaner than one of my kitchen plates. So come to Jesus. He is willing and he can make you clean. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for your word. We thank you for the truth. We thank you that uh, there is only one answer to our sin problem and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that he has dealt with our sin completely and utterly at the cross. And Lord, I do pray that uh, those of us who know of your saving grace in our lives would uh, have the courage um, to and the compassion to share Jesus Christ with the lost. Uh, we would ask that you would help us to pray, that you would teach us to pray and that you would be glorified and our faith would be strengthened through prayer. And Lord, we do pray for any who may have not called on your name to be saved. May they know uh, the seriousness of their condition but also uh, that there is a cure to be found in the Lord Jesus Christ um, we ask you Holy Spirit to uh, convict and bring uh, these people through to your glory in Jesus name, Amen, Amen. and we're going to stand now and sing um, <coughs> mission praise number 712 um, and it asks this question, O oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. I'm sure that's how the leper felt. There's light for a look at the Saviour and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will go, grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Thank you.
by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, our Prompter and our Guide, be with us all, both now and forevermore, and to him be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. 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 <laughs>